All right, 7.2, we're now looking at algebraically solving these trig equations. Now, a lot of times if it's a multiple choice question or if it's a numerical response question, you can do it graphically. However, any written questions, you gotta do it algebraically. So it's very important to know this part. Let's review what we've already previously done in chapter six here. Solving sine of theta equals negative one half. Well, where is that gonna be? That's gonna be because sine is negative, it's gonna be either in quadrant three or four. We can just hit straight to our unit circle, or you can use your reference triangles, or you could even do the inverse sine of positive one half to be able to get your reference angle. And that actually is your reference angle. But I'm gonna go straight to our unit circle and go off of there. Because we're talking about sine, we're talking about the y coordinate on the unit circle. And we just look, where's the y coordinate of the unit circle? Negative one half. And we're at a point here that was negative root three over two, negative one half. And this point over here had root three over two and negative one half. And we're dealing with degrees. So then we just look at the degrees for it. This one is 210, and this one is 330 degrees. And those are our two answers. Now if we've got more going on, it really still comes back to the same concept. We've got a cosine over here, we've got a cosine over there. We're going to start isolating for the cosine. So let's solve for the cosine by itself. Four cos of x plus three equals seven cos of x plus two. Hey, let's get all the cos of x is on one side. So I'm gonna take it to keep it positive. So seven cos of x minus four cos of x equals three minus two. So we're getting three cos of x is equal to one. So cos of x equals one third. And now we solve it the same kind of way we did that first question, except this one is not on the unit circle. One third is not an x value, because cos is the x value, it's not the x value on the unit circle. So we're gonna start drawing it out here. I know that cos is positive in quadrants one and four. I now need my, so that's step one. Draw it, sketch it. Step two is find the reference angle. Can't use the unit circle, can't use special triangles, so we've got to use inverse cos of one third. And I remind you here again, we always use the positive ratio in order to find our unit circle. We're tricking the calculator into thinking we're talking about quadrant one always. And when we punch that into the calculator, in radian mode, got to look at what the domain is asking, we get a reference angle of 1.2309. That means that it's 1.23 inside this triangle and 1.23 inside that triangle. Quadrant one is the same as the reference angle. So we've got a quadrant one answer, we've got a quadrant four answer. And x is equal to 1.23 in quadrant one, and in quadrant four, we're going two pi minus 1.23. So then we've got two pi minus 1.23, we punch that into the calculator, and we got 1.23, and what is that, 5.05, good to go. We can graph it, Graph left side, right side, find the intersection. I suggest you graph, bring it all to one side, equate to zero, find your zeros. Same answer. These questions we've just looked at here now are called first degree equations because there's no squares. It's just cosine 10 or whatever. What we're gonna do for each one of these is always get it into the ratio 
on uh, the sine x on one side, tan x on one side, cos x on one side, and the ratio on the other side, the numbers on the other side. And the next part saying is sometimes they're going to be on the special uh, triangles, they're going to be on the unit circle. Anything that's a multiple of pi over 6 or pi over 4 is a unit circle place. So pi is over 3s, pi is over 2s, those will all be on there. So just as you can see with there, picking it through just like we did the last one, and do your quadrant 1 or 2, 3 or 4, so this one is 2 and 3. Draw it, sketch it, and then add or subtract from pi and 2 pi as you need. Same as we've been doing all along. You can always check your things graphically. We know that this graph has a period of 2 pi because period is always equal to, with sine and cosine, 2 pi over the b value. The b value is 1. So it's 2 pi over 1, so it's 2 pi. If we're talking about tan, period on tan is pi over b. And again, this textbook uses k's and z's. On the diploma, historically, they've always used n's and i's. So the way that we solve this one now is we take our... There we go. So we're always going to take our first answer, which was 2 pi over 3 that you saw there, and add to it the period. So we got first positive solution, and we add to that the period, and slap an N on there, NEI. You'll see what this looks like again. That's the first one, and that's on the way up or on the way down. Then the second one, second positive solution, plus the period, slap an N on it, NEI. Same as what I just discussed in 7.1. So to tie it all together here, the first positive one is on the way down. All of the ones on the way down graphically are in green. All the ones on the way up graphically are in the blue there. And tying it to our algebraic, we would have had a quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 answer. Our yellow ones are the quadrant 2 answers. Our blue ones are the quadrant 3 answers. Doing a quick verification with our technology again. There's a closer view of the down, and there's a closer view of the up. And to get from your decimal answer into your exact form, divide by pi, then math frac, and then take it That'll get you two thirds. Put the pie back on. All right, let's do them. So algebraically solve that one between negative 360 and zero. We're in degrees. Got to know which way we're going with it. So let's start by isolating our sine of x on one side. So seven plus two sine x equals four sine x plus 5. Let's move all the sine of x. I'm going to try to keep it positive just to make it easier on myself. So I'm going to move it to 2 sine x equals 7 minus 5, which is whoop, 2. There we go. Now we're going to divide the 2 over, so sine of x is equal to 1. Let's do a quick sketch. So step 1, sketch. Where is sine of x 1? On the unit circle, sine of x, that's the y-coordinate, where's the y-coordinate equal to 1? And we are right up here. But 
we are going between 0 and negative 360. We got to go in the negative direction. So I'm talking about that angle over here. Well, in degrees, so that would be, it's 90 in the positive, but going negative, that's negative 270 degrees. So there's our answer. X equals negative 270 degrees. And then we got to do our general solution. How often would this happen? Well, when we're doing our general solution, we want to always start with the first positive one. We don't want to start with negative 270. That's not a positive answer. The first positive answer would have actually been here. Now, just watch that when you're checking your answers in the back of this book here. They might be using negative 270 as your starting point. We should be using the first positive one. So the first positive one is 90 degrees. Plus, how often is this going to happen? The period on sine of x is 2 pi. So we've got plus 2 pi. Slap an n in there. If you put it before or after, it doesn't matter. We like to put it in the middle. That's the grammar of it. And define your n. We have to do four multiples of 2 pi, either positive or negative, so that n is an integer, any integer multiple of 2 pi. Next one, cos of 3x equals negative 1, no. First thing we're going to identify right off the bat is what is the period. Well, the period, it's cosine, so it's 2 pi, over the b value, which is 3. So our period on this is 2 pi over 3. Now we're going to solve for this question just like regular, to start with. Go to our unit circle, where is cos negative 1? That is our x-coordinate, so we're over here, which gives you pi. However, that's not the value of x. That's the value of 3x. So 3x now equals pi. So x is equal to pi over 3. That's your first positive answer. Or your reference angle, if you want to think of it that way. We've got to do the work in between here, from negative 2 pi to 0. And if you notice the way they asked this question, they first of all said over the set of real numbers. Find the general solution first, and then find it in that domain. So when there's a b value that's not 1, it's easier to get your general solution first. Even if they don't ask for it, do your general solution first. It's going to be your first positive answer. And there's only, only one answer in here, so I only have to write one part of the general solution. So x equals first positive plus the period, period of cosine 3x became 2 pi over 3. Slap an n in there. N e i. So there's your general solution over the real numbers. And now we can use this by putting in n values to find ones that are in our domain. Again, was 0 to negative 2 pi. Well, I've got to make this value negative. So I'm going to have to start with n values. Let's start with negative 1. Let's get an answer and see if it's between 0 and negative 2 pi. So then x equals pi over 3 plus 2 times negative 1 pi over 3, which gives us pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. 
So you got pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. Nice, they're both with the same denominator. So then we can just subtract to get negative pi over 3. There's one answer. But can we go further? Can we go around again in the period and still be within 2 pi? The answer is going to be yes. Because when we have a b value of 3, that's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third, which means we are going to have, graphically, from regular 0 to 2 pi, one cycle. But now, as soon as we do that stretch by a factor of 1 third, we're now going to have this three times, three cycles in 2 pi. That's what it's saying. There's three cycles in 2 pi. So instead of just one answer in 2 pi, we're going to have three answers. So start, go to the next one, n of negative 2. The next rotation around, x equals pi over 3 plus 2 times negative 2 pi over 3, pi over 3, minus 4 pi over 3, which gives us negative 3 pi over 3. Oh, that's negative pi. There's a second answer, and that's still between 0 and negative 2 pi. So we can go another period around. N of negative 3. Repeat. x equals pi over 3 plus 2 times negative 3 pi over 3. That's pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. Pi minus 6, 1 minus 6 there, we get negative 5 pi over 3. If we try to go to the fourth one, putting in an n value, of negative 4, or the fourth cycle, we're outside of the domain. The answer is going to be larger than what we're allowed. Let's just do it to show you, because this one's a important one to see. So if we put in negative 4, then that would give us pi over 3 plus 2 times negative 4 pi over 3 gives you pi over 3 minus 8 pi over 3. That would be negative 7 pi over 3. And that's more than than negative 2 pi, or not, I guess not more than, I should say, really less than. It's outside of the negative 2 pi that we're allowed to go to. That would have been negative 6 pi over 3. So that answer, no go. We just have those three, which were x equals negative pi over 3, negative pi, and negative 5 pi over 3. All right, let's go again. Solve, and what's the general solution? Same thing, go through and get your cos of x on the side all by itself. So we just subtract that over. We are going to get 3 cos of x equals negative 2. Divide over the 3. Cos of x equals negative 2 thirds. That's not one of them on the unit circle. So we're going to just do our sketch, visualize where it is. Cos is negative, here or there, two places. And let's find our reference angle, what's inside those. So reference angle is inverse cos of positive 2 thirds. Always use the positive, trick the calculator into thinking we're talking about quadrant 1 when we're not. 
and that gives us 0 0.8410. That's 0 0.8 inside here and 0 0.8 inside there. So the first answer there would be pi minus 0 0.84. And the second answer would be pi plus 0 0.84. And because we've got a b of 1, the period is still 2 pi. We don't have to adjust anything. So then x equals our quadrant 2 answer and our quadrant 3 answer. Quadrant 2 answer was pi minus 0 0.84, which comes out to 2.3005. And quadrant 3 answer, 3.9826. And they said to the nearest hundredth. Hundredth, two decimal places. 2.30 and 3.98. And the next part is general solution. Same cookie cutter. We've got a quadrant 2 answer. We've got a quadrant 3 answer. They're not related. They're in two different quadrants like that. So take the first positive answer, which was 2.30 plus the period. We already decided period of cosine is 2 pi over b. b is 1. It's just 2 pi. Slap an n in there and tell me that it has to be an integer n. Then do the same thing. With a quadrant 3 answer, second positive plus 2 pi for the period, slap an n in the period, tell me that I can do any multiple of that period. And that's your general solution. And then we work on the second part. Solve again for cosecant x equals negative 5 over root 2. Well, um, I don't have a cosecant button on my calculator, so I'm going to take the reciprocal. Cosecant goes with sine of x equals take the reciprocal of the other side, root 2 over negative 5. So we've got negative root 2 over 5. And I'm pretty sure that's not on the unit circle. So I'm going to sketch it. It's negative, it's sine, so it's in quadrant 3 or 4. And find my reference angle. Same thing. Reference angle is the inverse sine of the positive. Again, trick the calculator and think we're talking about quadrant 1. In the calculator, that gives us 16.4299 dot dot dot. So that's 16.4 in here, 16.4 in there. And add and subtract as you need. So we've got x equals, we've got a quadrant 3 answer, a quadrant 4 answer, quadrant 3, pi plus 16.4. And in quadrant 4, we've got 2 pi minus 16.4. That gives us, whoa, wait, stop. I didn't look at my domain here. I was only allowed to go to positive 180 and negative 180. So I don't get to go in this direction. Those are going to give me positive answers. But there's nothing from 0 to 180. So i got to go in the backward direction from 0 to negative 180. So let's work backwards. The quadrant 4 answer is going to be negative 16.4. And, oh, that's degrees, sorry, I forgot to put my degrees on there. And in quadrant 3, I've got 360, or sorry, 180, negative 180, minus a negative 16.4. That's going to give us uh, negative 164 degrees and negative 16 degrees because they said to the nearest degree there. And then general solution. Okay, 
So in our general solution, we should be doing our first positive and our second positive. So the first positive on this one would have been our quadrant 3 answer, which would have been the 180 plus 16. And 360 minus 16 to give us our two positive solutions. And that gives us uh, 196 degrees and 344 degrees. And take those again. So our general solution now would be 196 plus our period, 360N degrees, NEI, and our 344 degrees plus 360N degrees, NEI. Done. And a quick reminder here with quadratics, how to solve for quadratics. If you're looking to solve, hey, equate to zero and then factor. Then equate each of those factors to zero and you solve. We're going to do exactly the same thing. But this time, instead of just having an x in there, we're going to have some kind of a trig function. These are going to be called second degree or quadratic. So we did the first one as first degree. These are going to be second degree. And just to quickly show you that process there. Take it, move everything over to one side. So the same as we just saw. Equate to zero. Whenever you have a quadratic in this course, equate to zero and then factor. Reminder, this is meaning cos of x in brackets squared. I'm actually going to recommend that you do this, though. Replace anywhere you see cos, let's put a capital A. So it's actually 5a squared plus 4a minus 1 equals 0. And then you can factor from there. This is exactly the same as what was on the other page there. So then it factors into 5a minus 1 and Oops, a plus 1. I don't recommend you use x because you might think when you get to the end x equals that that was your answer. No, no, no. Put in something that we regularly don't use. How about a capital A? Then you've got 5a minus 1 equals 0. So then a equals 1 fifth. And you've got a plus 1 equals 0. a equals negative 1. Now substitute back in your cosine. A was just holding the place of cos of x. So we put back in cos of x equals 1 fifth, and then cos of x equals negative 1. And you solve these two just like we've been solving any of them before. You just have two questions in one now. All right, bit.ly link there. Let's see if you can factor a second degree trig expression. Try that one out. So now we're going to use algebra to solve this one. We've got a second degree polynomial here. Well, I only have cos of x squared. I don't have just a cos of x in there. So I don't have to equate to zero and factor. I can just say, hey, this is going to be 2. I'll put in the a squared just to make it easier on myself. Divide it over. a squared equals 1 over 2. Square root both sides to solve for a. a is 1 over root 2. You didn't need to put in the a, but you could have in this one. Let's bring back in the cos of x is equal to 1 over root 2. But wait a minute. If you take the square root, you got to remember plus or minus. And you also have to realize that 1 over root 2 is exactly the same thing as root 2 over 2. Half the time you're going to see it in one form. 
half the time you're going to see it in the other form. You have to recognize those are the same. So if you want to change it into root 2 over 2, go ahead. doesn't matter either way. So then we go to our unit circle or to our reference triangles, whichever way. We're looking for where is cos positive and negative. Oh, that's in all four quadrants. And we're looking at those four places. Looking on a unit circle, we're in degrees here. So that's 45 degree reference angle inside. So then our answers are x equals, well, we've got to look at our, our period first before we go any further. Period is 2 pi over the b value, which was 1, so it's just 2 pi. The b value was 1 inside that cos. We've got a quadrant 1 answer, a quadrant 2 answer, a quadrant 3 answer, a quadrant 4 answer. We got 45 degrees. We've got 180 minus 45 degrees. We've got 180 plus the 45 degrees, and we've got 360 minus the 45. Or you can just get those values right off from the unit circle. That gives us 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees, and 315 degrees. Done deal. You need to show some work in an algebraic solution. You can't just jump right to the answers. You have to show what you've done along the way. Now sometimes the second degree might not be factorable. So you can't factor it. We're going to use a quadratic formula. Quadratic formula will always work if you don't want to factor it. So we can pretty much guarantee that this one is going to be not factorable. So we're going to use quadratic formula this time. All right, so start by equating it to zero. We've got a cos squared and a cos. So we've got 3 cos squared x plus cos x minus 1 equals zero. I'm going to change this into the a's. 3a squared plus a minus 1 equals zero. Then I can use my quadratic formula, which is x equals, or a in our case, equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. That makes that my a value, my b value, and my c value. And then let's plug it in. So a equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 1. Whoops, times negative 1, there we go. All over 2 times 3. Reduce that, and we get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6. And A was just holding the place. It's actually cos of x. So I've got two things happening. I've got a plus and a minus. That means I've got cos of x equals negative 1 plus square root of 13 over 6. And I've got the other one, which is cos of x equals negative 1 minus root 13 over 6. i got to do both of those. Well, let's look at this first one. Let's actually take it to a decimal. This is really saying cos of x equals 0.434 dot dot dot. Store that value into your calculator because you're going to want to just have that sitting there. Okay. That's a positive value. That means cos is positive. We're talking about quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Let's find our reference angle. So that's the inverse cos of that stored value. which gives us uh, 1.12 dot dot dot. That's my reference angle. 1.12 in here, 1.12 in there. Got to look at the domain now. We're going from pi to negative pi. So I get to go around this way once, and I get to go that way once. Well, 
I hit the triangle first in the positive direction, quadrant one answer. My quadrant one answer is going to be 1.12. In my quadrant four answer, I've got to go the negative direction around. I've got to go this way to get there. So then that's going to be negative 1.12. Got those first two. Now we're going to look at the negative value. And this as a decimal is going to give us cos of x equals negative 0 0.76759 dot dot dot. Oh, that's a negative value there. So I know in this case I'm going to be in quadrants three, two and three. All right, let's find our reference angle for this one. Reference angle is equal to inverse cos of the positive angle. We always look for the positive angle when we're talking reference angle here. Store that value, multiply it by negative one, whatever you need to do, keep all the decimals. Trigonometry is really bad if uh, you round any answers. You get off pretty quick. And so that gives me my reference angle this time as 0 0.6957. So that's 0 0.69 inside here, 0 0.69 inside there. So let's solve for this one. X equals, we got a quadrant two answer to deal with, we got a quadrant three answer to deal with. Remember that we're only able to go once this way and once that way. So the first one is coming this direction. The second one's coming backwards direction. So my quadrant two answer is pi minus 0 0.6957, which is going to give us uh, 2.4458. And the quadrant three answer, we're going the neg negative direction. That's negative pi minus a negative 0 0.6957, which is going to be the negative 2.4458. Let's just combine those four things together into one shot. We've got x equaling plus and minus 1.12, and we've got plus and minus 2.44. There's the four answers from negative pi to pi. Hey, it's a general solution here little bit tricky. Let me redraw for you your four triangles. You've got the first one, 1.12 inside there. You've got the second one there, 1.12 inside there. The third one here was 0 0.69 inside there. And here, 0 0.69 inside there. None of those are related. We've got four separate answers that we need to take deal with those four. And we should be using the first positive answer in that sequence. Now, every now and then they'll break that rule, they'll use the negative one here, but we're going to do it with the positives. So quadrant one, first answer, that was 1.12 plus the period. This was cos. The, the b value was 1 in all the way through, so it's plus 2n pi N -E -I. There's quadrant one. Quadrant two, that was pi minus the 0 0.69 or 2.44 plus the period to get back to there, 2n pi, n e i. Now quadrant three, we didn't do the positive one, so we just have to do a quick calculation on that. I'm pretty sure I told you to store that 0 0.69 in there. We needed that value, the whole value with it. Our quadrant three answer would be pi plus the 0 0.6957 dot dot dot. That'll get us this one. Oops, and I should have put actually 2.45. That should have rounded to 2.45 as two decimal places. And this one here in quadrant three would be 3. Point, it'll round to 8, 3.84. So bring it in here, 3.84 plus 2n pi, n e i. And in the quadrant 4 answer, we've got in here 2 pi minus 
and should have had that stored as well. And that equals 5.16. So the last quadrant four answer, 5.16 plus 2n pi nei. There's your general solution. Four parts of it. Woo! Your three bring them together questions, and we're finally done.